How is she sleeping? If you're a new parent, you've probably been asked this question again and again. After all, sleep is important. And let's be honest, if the baby's not sleeping, the rest of the family probably isn't either. I'm a mother. I'm also a science journalist. And so when I had my little one, I decided to look a little bit more deeply at some of the ideas that I heard bandied about so much on social media, in baby books, and in conversations with other parents. Here are four of the most popular misconceptions I found. One common myth is that babies all need the same amount of sleep. For example, 12 hours at night and three hours of naps. The science doesn't back this up. One study of four to six month olds, for example, found that the babies slept an average of 14 hours and 24, but that's the average. If you compare the baby getting the most sleep to the baby getting the least sleep, there is an eight hour difference. That's part of why professional bodies, like the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, recommend ranges instead. For example, 12 to 16 hours in 24 for a baby under one year of age. And they don't recommend schedules or even how much sleep should come at night versus during the day. Infants simply vary too much for those kinds of guidelines. Myth two, if babies are waking at night, they're not getting the sleep they need. Not only is this false, but waking actually helps protect babies. First, there is a caveat. If your child is waking frequently over a long period of time, it's worth getting a medical assessment to rule out any health issues. But healthy babies wake too. All humans wake between sleep cycles. As adults, we normally fall right back to sleep. But babies can't meet their own needs, whether that's for feeding or emotional regulation. So they often arouse more fully and more often. One study found that three-month-olds woke anywhere from zero to 15 times per night. And it doesn't always improve as quickly as many of us would like. A different study found that babies woke on average the same number of times throughout their whole first year. That can be tough on families. But we can take some solace from the fact that in babies, waking is a good thing. Researchers are finding more and more of a link between a lack of arousal in sleep and SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. Prematurely pushing a baby towards longer, deeper sleep, it seems can increase the risk. Waking helps protect them. Myth three, babies need to be on a strict schedule, ideally including seven to seven nighttime sleep. If you take this idea as gospel in the earliest days, you are setting yourself up for real frustration. That's because the physiological processes that tell us when it's time to sleep, like melatonin excretion, don't get going until at least eight to 11 weeks of age. But even in older babies, a strict schedule may not be best. For one thing, feeding and sleeping are often linked. And the research shows that for the majority of infants, feeding responsively in accordance to a baby's hunger cues is far better than by the clock. As for the seven to seven schedule, there's no scientific evidence behind it. Many cultures around the world don't follow it. And if you have a baby whose lower sleep needs, you might just find that a 7 p.m. bedtime leads to a 4 a.m. wake up. Myth four. This might be the biggest worry for parents, that if babies don't sleep through, they're being set up for poor development. It's easy to see where this idea came from. A lack of sleep or fragmented sleep has been associated with a higher risk of things like ADHD. But that's in older children. The same links have not been found in babies. One Canadian study looked at six and 12 month olds and then saw how they were doing at three years of age. It found no significant links between sleeping through the night and later development. Other research bears this out. So how do you know if your baby is getting enough sleep? Look at your baby. If she's fussy, maybe sleep needs tweaking. But all else being well, you probably don't need to worry. 
Here's what I took from all of this as a new parent. If any of these ideas work for you, great. If they don't, you're not alone. And the good news is that if your baby is happy and your family is coping, you don't have to change a thing.